guys, Cindy Otter here with my Artsy Endeavors. How are you doing today? I'm doing pretty well. Um, we are here to do a quick video for Art Joy of Sharing, and this month the topic is our favorite things. Um, as you guys know, I love stencils, right? All kinds of stencils. I enjoy the 6x6 the most, and that is what I have the most of. So what I've done is I created a drawing here. This is a while back. I was just doodling on a dictionary book or something. Oh, it was just a regular book to read. Um, I was doodling on it, and I got thinking about it, and I really want to have this in stencil form. So I'm going to give you guys a little treat today. I'm going to redraw this on a 6x6 six six piece of paper, and then I'm going to introduce you to my friend, Carla McCants. She owns the company What If NC. And I'm going to give this to her, and she is going to show you her process to cut this into a stencil for me. So I hope you guys enjoy. We'll chat with you a bit. I was freehanding. I didn't like them. I really like this pattern that I drew. So I've got a piece of carbon paper here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it down on this 6x6. Six six. Sorry, my hands are shaking. Um, I'm going to put it down on this 6x6. Six six. I'm going to put this over top. And then I'm just going to trace it, and what it's going to do is it's going to put this pattern down on the paper. What I did is I did the carbon tracing and notice I didn't take up the whole six by six and that's because I want to allow Carla room to adjust it however she needs to for the laser machine. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and go over it with a sharpie. Once I do that I'm going to build what's called bridges. So when you look at a stencil if I just cut this right here and cut it all out you're just gonna have holes there right and it's just all gonna go away so what I'm gonna do is instead of having a floppy stencil I'm gonna take out parts of the lines and that's called a bridge so I'm gonna use a white pen and I'm gonna white out part of the line um, I'm gonna do the same thing throughout the stencil so that when she cuts the stencil it stays together and it's not just completely gone you'll see what I mean all right let me go ahead and do the sharpie and we'll be back so what I did is I just went over it with Sharpie. Now if you notice there's still some graphite here from the tracing paper. I'm going to go ahead and clean that off and then I'm going to clean up some lines. Like so for see here for example, oops this way, see here for example how it gets thick and there's this little tiny piece going out. I'm going to clean up these lines the best I can to make them as straight as possible for Carla. So it just kind of helps her out in her process. We'll be back. So what I did is I cleaned up all the lines and how I do that is with a white um, gel pen. So what I did is what I could not um, get erased, I went through and I did a white the gel pen around. If I had a thicker line, again, I used the gel pen around it to, to make it, you know, the same or close to the same size. So what I try to do when I give Carla a drawing is I try to make it as clean as possible. So you may hear that laser running in the background. In a few minutes, I'm going to introduce you to Carla, and she's going to show you the process on 
how we get this little piece of paper with a drawing cut into a stencil. I wanted to show you something. My friend and I got talking about it. We got talking about the importance of bridges. And I wanted to show you what happened. This is the drawing without any bridges, right? So she cut a stencil. This is what happens. When you don't have any bridges in your stencils, this is how they turn out. Now, you guys know, using stencils enough, you want these lines hooked together so you can just lay this down and do your stencil on it, correct? Now, it makes for a great mask, but that's not what I wanted. This is great, I'll definitely use it in my art, but I wanted a stencil that's gonna A, stay together, B, give me the design I want, and C, not be so difficult to stencil with. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take the same drawing and I'm going to put in bridges. So let's go ahead and do that. Again, I'm going to use my white pen and we're going to put the bridges in. So I'm going to look at this. This is exactly how it sits right now. So first of all, I've got these. My flowers are gone, right? So let's not make my flowers go away. So I'm going to put in a bridge here. I'm going to put in a bridge here. I'm going to put one here, I'm going to put one here, Oops. and I'm going to put one here. Now if you look at that, what it did is it actually broke up those straight lines. See where I broke them up? So now what's going to happen is when the laser cuts, it's only going to cut in between those two little white lines there. So it's going to leave a piece of the stencil intact wherever I put those little white lines. So I'm going to go ahead and do the bridges. We're going to cut it again. Actually, I'm going to have, at that point, have Carla show you what she does with it in her computer, how it cuts, how it comes out. We're going to talk about it, and then I'm going to use it in my journal. All right, guys, let me do some bridges. What I did is I went ahead and I put in bridges. So I'm going to put this up close so you guys can see it a little bit better. See these little white marks? All of those are going to be bridges, which means the laser is not going to cut that piece out. And what this is going to do is it's actually going to tie this stencil in together so that it stays as one piece and we can use it to stencil. These guys here, see how they completely cut out? Well, what I did is I put bridges into the flowers. See these little two white marks? There's one here, there's one here, and there's one here. So what's gonna happen is only the black is gonna be cut out by the stencil. The rest is gonna stay in, um, I'm sorry, only the black is gonna be cut out by the laser. The rest of it is gonna stay in as a stencil. So, and I just looked at this. I have one other issue here. So right now, if I handed this to Carla to have her cut this, look what's gonna be cut. This line up to here, up to here, up to here, and up to here. So what does that tell me? This whole thing right here is going to be floppy because it's not connected to this line. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put in another bridge and I'm going to do it there and I'm going to do it here. So now what's going to happen is the actual laser will only cut the black marks and it's not going to cut those white. So those are going to be bridges and it's going to keep the stencil together. So I'm going to look at the other leaves, make sure I need to do the same thing which is right here. I need one right here. Uh, let's do one right here. Uh, let's see, over here we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to go one there. And this is just going to hold them so that they don't lift up from the stencil. There's a line. There's a line. Uh, let's see, this one here. I need a line here. And it's very easy to put the bridges in. All you have to do is use a white marker. Or, um, I'm using a white Posca pen. Uh, you can use a jelly roll. You can use, you know, any type of white that's going to completely take out the black of that space. So here it is. It is ready to go to Carla. She's going to show you her process. And we're going to come out with a different stencil than this one. All right, so let's go. Guys, this is my friend Carla. Carla, say hi. Hello, everybody. So good to meet you. Hey, so Cindy has sent me her digital image of what she's drawn. Um, if you wanted me to cut a stencil for you, you would do the same thing, whether you scan it, take a photo of it. Scanning's probably the best because 
it square and exact the image that you want. Um, if you take a picture, you might get one side bigger than the other side if you're angled at all. So at this point, I'm going to load it into my software um, and prepare it for being cut. So I have um, templates set up for 6x6, six 4x4, six, four four, and like ATC size as well. So I'm going to import her image. And that's what the system's doing right now. You'll see her picture. And my software has the ability to trace it. So it'll trace around all of the lines that she's drawn. And then I delete the image, leaving what she has given me. Um, and then I can move that where it needs to be on the stencil. And we had talked uh, already, and I know that she wants me to make it bigger. So I've made it bigger. And I'm at the point where I can send it to my laser machine. Um, so let's get that going and we'll go take a look at it on the laser. So we're at my laser machine. You can hear it running. It'll actually get louder when I start the stencil cutting uh, because there's a water generator that runs um, to keep the laser cool. So I'm going to start it from the machine. Um, and here we go. Other one. You see, I've got um, a little piece of laser mylar in there, and the laser machine is now cutting out the image, going around, which is really kind of fun. The white sheet of paper you see is just for me to know where to place all my stencils every time so I get consistency in uh, how they're in the machine. stencil from me, the one thing that I will do um, is I will actually send you not only the stencil, but all the little pieces or, or the guts um, uh, from the inside your stencil. So if you want to use that in your next media projects, you've got that available to you as well. You can find me um, on uh, Facebook and on Instagram under WhatIfNC. I also have an Etsy store. If you're wanting a custom stencil made, um, just contact me on Facebook. Send me a private message. I'll get back with you. Uh, the pricing is, it varies based on how many stencils you want cut. So there is a, a sheet on my Etsy and Facebook that would tell you about pricing if you're interested. So our stencil is done cutting, so now we're going to take it out. So let me uh, show you that process. So when I lift the stencil up, a lot of times it will have melted some parts into the stencil bed. So um, it kind of self weeds a little bit, and I may have to take a few pieces out. Keep your um, lines nice like Cindy has here and wide. Uh, because if you get too fine in detail, this is a stencil I've been working on, a design I've been working on, um, and I got too fine, and some of my lines have melted into each other, which kind of destroys some of the finer detail in the stencil and makes it really impossible to weed some of these off because they just, they won't come off because they're, they're melted in. So at this point, the stencil is ready to go to Cindy. Um, and she can use it in her design. Hey, look what I have. I have my stencil cut. Now, if you notice, since we put the bridges in, remember how weak the other one was? Uh, which is right here. Hold on. See how floppy this one was? And this one is not like that at all. So that right there shows you the importance of the bridges in your design. So what I'm going to do now, the next thing I need to do is I'm going to play with it. Let's see how this uh, stencils up. So I've got a notebook right here that I'm just going to play around in. Uh, give me a second. I've got to find my paints. Okay, so I've got a little bit of the Dilutions paint. This is Blue Lagoon. 
and I have some golden and this is their teal. I just have a sponge. I've got a little paint palette here in front of me. I'm going to throw a little bit of paint on. Now don't forget this, this stencil as well as um, several others that have a designer um, that's the name Utter are in Carla's Etsy shop. So if you are interested in any of these stencils, this one, whoops, this one will be here also. Uh, yeah, my iPad just fell down. Hold on. <laughs> Get that back there. There's nothing on it. It just fell down. All right, so let's throw a little bit of this teal on also. Is this the right one? Yeah, blue look going. And I just want to see, let's see how it stencils. Are you ready? I'm excited. These bottles won't stay out of my way. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start right here. So I've laid the stencil down. You guys know how to stencil, right? We're going to use some paint that looks like it's going to be a mess if I don't use a little bit. There we go. So let's see how it works. Now, another thing I know Carla mentioned to you about the size of your lines. If you don't keep your lines um, big enough, it's very, very difficult to stencil them. And you guys know that from, you know, our other stencils that we, we have used in the past. The smaller the detail, the harder it is to stencil. So I like to have bigger detail anyway. Look at that! Look, look, look! Yeah! Um, I like to have uh, bigger detail anyway, so I tend to use um, or create with bigger lines. All right, let's try a little bit of this other color. This is the Diane Reevely. Just remember when you're stencil, and I know most of you guys, you know, know this already, but if, you know, anybody new is watching, um, when you're stenciling, don't use too much paint because it doesn't matter how careful you get, you're going to get paint underneath the stencil. So um, I try to pretty much dry stencil, if that's a word. See, there's not a whole lot of paint on my stencil or on my sponge. Some people use brushes. I don't do well with brushes, so I just use my little sponge here and I just pop it. All right, so there it is. I just wanted to give you an idea of how it's stenciled up. I am thrilled with it. I can't wait. Um, don't forget, go ahead and do some drawings and, you know, work on them and talk with Carla. She's more than willing to help you along with the process and get some of your own designs and some of your own doodles. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to have fun. That's what life's all about. Happy creating. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.